any more questions? What he said is, is actual fact because uh, they're looking to drain the energy when it's just one of you in their presence. They, they're mm -hmm. looking to drain your energy. Right. For sure. Yeah, I realize we're very impressionable people. Uh, as Nubians, we're very impressionable. So when we're around a lot of those, a lot of them, um, we we begin to become weaker and we become impressed or you know, impressed upon by their nature. That's why you, if you notice a lot of Nubians that are high up, certain corporate jobs, they begin to sound and act a lot like a Caucasoid because they're around them so much, they start taking on their nature, and then the Caucasoids in reverse is taking away from them. You know, vampires, vampires of ether. All that, all that needs to be known. You know, that's why, you know, if you're going to be in that situation, you better be doing it to get us into a situation or to learn from them and take it to back to where we are. You know, right. otherwise you need to be doing what we're supposed to be doing, which is creating for for ourselves. Because the, the more you're around them, the more susceptible you are to your ether being drained from you. All that information needs to be known, and we have to start applying that. Otherwise, uh, we're going to be sucked dry from wanting to be around them so much. You know, it was something I talked about yesterday um, in class, where um, it was a, it was a, it was a Caucasian female came in because one of our assignments in class was about it was about. Um, creating your family tree, you know, your lineage, you know, from your mother, your father, your grandma, your grandfather, et cetera, et cetera. And all of a sudden, some of the sisters were, were going in on black men and how bad they were and uh, having illegitimate kids here and illegitimate kids there. And I'm saying to myself, wow, uh, the sister that is over the class, because it's, it's Afro-American history class, when she wants to build about current events in the black community, none of you have anything to say. But the moment a white woman comes in, you have all this this energy to to spill your guts to this to this white mama. <laughs> right. I think that was I thought that was very funny. I thought that was hilarious. I just sat back and laughed at that. Like you, that's 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 mental slavery because you should have people that when she first came in, I just looked at her. She she's the enemy, and they looked at her as a as a as a, a Doctor Phil moment or. So just a Raphael moment. They want to spill their guts to the to the white woman. <laughs> Hilarious! Like, no, that's not what you're supposed to be doing. Because then she she takes your your business, and that's why you get all this all this this, this propaganda about how bad we are as a race. They and they mind like, well, you told me how bad this person was. You told me how bad your personal life is. What you expect me to do? That's a problem of, of, of trusting the beat too much. That's crazy. I see that way too much. And, you know, it's not just when a woman, the men do the same thing. It was, it was a brother in there, and he wanted to start spilling his guts about not having no daddy around. It's like, dude, that's, a, that's just the, neither the time or the place to be having your, your white mama moment in class. Mm. That's ridiculous. I, I, I didn't like that. You know, I'm, and me... I'm going to say something about it tomorrow in class. Like, look, y'all don't need to be doing that. You don't need to be putting your business out there. You're going to ask a question about your assignment. Ask a question about your assignment. Don't start going into your business. Because she could care less. And then she, she leaves and she starts putting the information. Next thing you know, you get a, a Tyler Perry-esque movie about how bad our, our, um, our, our hood is and our relationships are. It was bad enough Tyler Perry do that himself. <laughs> exactly. You yeah, so hey, that's bad enough. Right. You got propaganda coming from our own tribe. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. ridiculous. You know, but no. That's 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 stuff like that we have to stop. You know, it's it's infighting is gonna happen regardless. But when you take that information and you start spreading it to to, to the enemy, problem is most of us don't don't know who the enemy is anymore. You know, we see each other as the enemy. You know, a black devil is a black devil, and we're going to have that class very soon as well. But when you start looking at 
who who the real enemy is, who, who's responsible for our certain situations, as your friend and as, and, as, and as the person you're supposed to love, then you have a problem. Mm-hmm. That's the problem. That's the problem I have. It's like you need to put this stuff out there to people because no one needs to know about your business like that. That's crazy. No, no, no. Yeah. Did anyone have any any updates or anything that they have that they've learned, um, updates from Pops or anything that they wanted to share before you get into the subject? I don't have anything, bro. Oh, oh, oh. All right. Today's, uh, tonight's class is about the, the power of the subconscious mind and how to control it, how to control your subconscious mind. Most of us don't even know what the subconscious mind really is, have never defined the subconscious mind. You know, a lot of us say, well, the unconscious mind, you know, the lower. Uh, no, it's not the lower at all. When you say sub, or sub means lower, but the subconscious mind is a very powerful thing. It's not a beneath or low anything. It's a very powerful thing. And I say thing for lack of a better word. Because the subconscious mind is actually connected to the mental reservoir, which we would know as the fourth plane or the mental plane. You understand? And we are very much interwoven with the subconscious mind. We just don't know it. For example, um, if you remember, we were going over in the third eye class about clairvoyance. Uh, When you take an object and you're able to, I'm sorry, not not clairvoyance, psychometry, when you're able to take an object and tell a good amount of of history about an individual, you're going subconsciously in in the subconscious mind of that individual. That's 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 to, to, to better explain what psychometry is because Psychometry, my father um, was, wanted to go further and further into psychometry, but that's a, a good way to condense it because you're able to take that object and that object has history because it's connected to the history of that individual and you're able to go even further into that person's subconscious and tell more and more about that person's life. That's a, that's a, that's a core that you connected from your subconscious, part of your also not just your subconscious mind, but into your now mind, into their subconscious mind. Do you understand? I understand. So now we have to also realize that all the implantations that we faced and that we've dealt with as Nubians and Africans of this world and Nuwapis of this world, that we have a problem. The biggest problem, as I said, is the incant- is the implantations of the music, the movies, and the shows. What happens is all the things that you've encountered in your life, all the things that created the bad dreams, the nightmares, the bad memories, nightmares such as you know the movies that I used to watch as a child, Nightmare on, on Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, the the Friday the Thirteenth movies, the Hellraiser movies, the Alien you know movies, the Predator, all these horror movies, they, you know, these become the things that we feared. All the things that we feared became um, monsters that's locked in our subconscious mind, and they periodically haunt us when we visit them. When we visit these when we revisit these movies at times, the the fear of these specific characters start to revisit us when we watch them. They subconsciously they revisit you and once you're able to look at let's say for example, perfect example, you're sitting here and you're looking at Nightmare and Elms, or you're looking at Freddy and the things that he does and the way he, the, the graphic way that he kills people, subconsciously it takes you back 30 years ago to the first time you saw it, and then it automatically jolts a fear inside of your mind. We've all been there. 
same thing, for example, if I'm watching the Dexter Chainsaw Massacre and I'm looking at the new movie, you know, it ain't got nothing to do with the old movie. Nothing to do with it at all. Totally different storyline, to, to, totally different. It's a different alternate reality, everything. But the moment I start watching that movie, I automatically go back subconsciously to the first time I watched it. That's the power of the subconscious mind. So the implantation, which is already locked in your subconscious mind, is now connected or, or gets reconnected to the new movie you're watching right now, and so you're actually re-haunted. You're re-haunted with a situation. You're re-haunted with the fear that you went through in, in your previous time period as a child. And when we're going through these different sacred initiations, especially the ancient Egyptian order initiation, and some people who are Nawapian now, you know, matter of fact, for example, when you refer to Mrs. of Egyptian Ma'at tape, and my father talks about the different sweat lodges and talks about where they, they put you down and they lay you down and they're able to, and they they, sweat, and they smoke these peyotes and they're able to conjure up out of your subconscious, out of your subconscious, and all these things that were harmful to you because you feared them. They're harmful to your mind because they, they began to become harmful to you because you began to fear them. They, 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 began, they began to become a part of all the different characters or the different things in your life that you fear. Not just Freddy Krueger, but the heights. Uh, connect to Freddy Krueger is this, the glove that he put on. All these things, they all become a part of the world of fear that you built up in your mind. Because you are the, you are the master of self, and being the master of self, you have created this fear inside of your own mind. Just like man has created ways subconsciously to make himself God and the devil. But going back, all these things, they will tell you these are these are things. When they bring up all these different things that are within your mind, these, these different characters that you fear, they're going to tell you these are the things that you fear and that you have to confront. They take these situations out of your subconscious mind and they tell you you have to confront them and you have to find a way to defeat Freddy Krueger or whatever it is. It, it doesn't have to even be Freddy Krueger. It can be a dragon, okay? It can be, it can be a, a snake, and some people have tremendous fears of snakes, have tremendous fear of spiders, weird things. But until you're able to confront this fear or this implantation that is locked in your subconscious mind, you will always lose, and it will it it, it will keep your 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 frequency down. It will keep your frequency down, and you will not be able to pass on. This is the same thing that you will have to confront. You will have to confront what is implanted in your subconscious mind whenever you go to your, your Ah-E-U or A-E-O, which is the Ancient Egyptian Order Initiation. They will, you will be confronted with all these different situations in your mind, these different subconscious situations that's in your subconscious mind that you have locked in because what it's telling you is that you created this. You are the controller of the subconscious mind. You have to learn to control it. Part of, it. part of this initiation is to learn how to control your subconscious mind. At times, from just out of nowhere, you start laughing at things. You know, you, 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 you might be walking down the street and just bust out laughing for nothing. You know, people look at you like, man, it's crazy. That nigga crazy over there laughing at something. I don't see it. But in your mind... <laughs> What's in your mind is it automatically comes to you from you looking at a sign, one sign that has something to do with it might be about working out and it's connected to within your subconscious mind about something you saw that has something to do with working out that made you laugh. So you reconnected a sign about the, about working out 
connected that to part of your subconscious mind about an instance you saw where someone on the treadmill and they, they fall off the treadmill and you start laughing. That's the power of the subconscious mind, that you can connect one thought to the next and it, and it jolts you in the now mind because everything from the subconscious mind manifests itself into the now mind and you act on it. You follow the best way for me to explain what I go through as a teacher, the, my best weapon is my subconscious. You understand? Everybody is not um, the best photographic teacher, meaning that you just read a book one time and then, bam, they can absorb all that information. Uh, Haru Hotep was the best at doing that. He was able to take one book, he could read from, he could read one time, and absorb it just like that. Uh, Menes or Mentu Hotep, his thing was repetition. He would he would connect one part of Holy Tablet, one part of the Black Book One and Two, one part of the Sumerian Bible, put them all together in bubbles, and was able to do things like that. I'm that kind of person. But what's happening with me right now is I'm able to train my subconscious to where I don't have to do repetition anymore. You know, with teaching, when a person asks me a question, remember my father told me this. Years ago, he said, you can answer a question so many different ways. It's not moosing or, or making up anything. It's about being able to connect one answer or that specific subject. It can be about Jesus, okay? It can be about Sananda. And you can connect Sananda, connect him with, with Haru, and then connect Sananda or, or Haru with, with Reha Akhat. You understand? These are situations. These are these are these are two different beings connected together. But I just connected them together by using the subconscious mind. Okay. The, again, when I answer questions, that is an exercise of the subconscious. When you you have to train your mind. All the information that you've learned, that you studied throughout time on your on your long walk on a short path, your brain ends up becoming a hard drive of information. All information that, that's stored is all stored in the subconscious mind. When you read a book, when you first read that book, it may not be in your now mind immediately like you can't go verbatim because that's what the mind, the, the now mind is, you know, is able to help you say things verbatim when you're able to train the subconscious. It's, it's stored, but it's not as vivid as it once was. You have to train your subconscious to be able to answer questions immediately. You understand? And so when we're answering questions, it's all about how well you're able to train that subconscious to pull that information from the subconscious and bring it to the now and answer that, that person's question individually. You understand? This is a, a, a specific practice that very few people are able to do now because they're mostly relying on just the books in front of them. You know, I have to I have to read the book seven times. I got to read the book nine times, and you have to in your mind deal with things from a visual level. If I don't get it in my head, that's it. I'm done. That means that you've pretty much cut off the training of the subconscious, and you can't do that. You understand because. Once you truly learned to master the subconscious mind, you can master anything. You know, you, you can control thoughts, you know, because the subconscious stores so many thoughts. It, it's their, their thoughts that, that are trying to get out, and, they're trying to, and what they do is they, they tend to manifest themselves in the now at certain times. That's why I say you might bust out laughing for no apparent reason because they, they store themselves in your mind and their dormant thoughts. These dormant thoughts at times, like I said, manifest themselves at the wrong time, and they, they tend to uh, get you in trouble. All the things that you've learned throughout your life, all the things that, that you've looked at, um, when you're looking at things, they're stored in the subconscious mind. That's why you tend to, you know, for example, the first time you can't find a place, you tend to use MapQuest first. So you, you, right. you get to using MapQuest, but the more... Once you've went there and you're there after that, you're like, oh, I don't need MapQuest no more. I don't need to use my navigation. So you eventually you know how to get there without using anything. 
because it's already stored in your subconscious. And so, for example, if I'm, if you're sitting back and you're thinking about something, you you photographically think it, and so you're able to locate it in your mind by just traveling throughout the subconscious to locate how to get there because you see it the first time. So so photographically, it's in your mind. So you're able to, at least from that aspect, train the subconscious. Mm-hmm. And so that's a that's an exercise that we all are supposed to be learning individually on how to train the subconscious, you know, just in just the simple practice of answering questions, you know, of right knowledge over a period of time, how are you able to learn or how are you able to learn and know that much information over that short period of time? And it baffles, as my father says, it baffles the normal pedestrian that you're able to know all that information from all these schools of thought because you have to train the subconscious in order for you to slay the devil, and that devil is ignorance, not just not just the white devil, or but it's that 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 level of ignorance and that level of misinformation, and the way you're able to do it and learn how to do it is by training your subconscious to track all that information that is inside that subconscious. You have to pull it out. And it goes back, again, I'm going to go right back into the subject of implantation. This is why um, I've cut off personally um, different horror movies in my life. I don't look at horror movies anymore because I realize all that stuff began to become part of my fears, the things that, you know, for example, you might eat something before you go to sleep, and the next thing you know, you're having a nightmare about something, and it conjures something up. The chemical in that food connected itself to the subconscious and is now um, something that was implanted in your mind is now in your now mind, and you're fighting a horror movie now. And that you wake up, and now that's it's, it's, it's in your now mind. You're thinking about it all day long, or at least for the next two hours, about how much it, it scared the crap out of you. And... For for us now, we have to, you know, unless it's unless we're told by the math teacher for a reason to read to look at certain movies that you know that might frighten us, we have to push certain things to the side because we realize these movies were, were not meant for information in the right way. You know, horror movies they're, they're meant to scare us and they were meant to implant certain demonic situations in our mind. They were not meant to help us whatsoever. You understand that is a problem because a lot of us are still lost in looking at things from an entertainment standpoint and not for the information or outformation standpoint. Okay, we have to get to that to that level where we can push back um, the European paradigm out of our mind because we're constantly following it. You know, eventually, you know, we say eventually we're going to get away from it, and there we go. Examples. Not even to the horror movie, but we 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 we're stuck in these reality TV shows, and that's locked in our subconscious because we act on it. A lot of our sisters act on what they see. A lot of our men begin to act what they act like what they see. We acting on what we see, so we're acting on what's locked in our subconscious. That's how powerful it is. It will manifest itself into the physical whenever it feels like. And we have to realize we have to be the controllers over what we implant in our subconscious. If we're not doing that, then we are setting ourselves up for our own death, our own spiritual death. You understand? Again, the subconscious is a world within its own, and it's connected to a deeper world, which is the mental reservoir. Again, where all thoughts manifest. Any questions? So the demons attack you in the subconscious. Yes. Um, uh, there was a book that Baba, I can't remember, put out about the different meanings of these characters like Michael Myers and Jason and mm-hmm. um, Leatherface. I mean, he, he made different meanings of them. And that's why I watched you to get the information of what I see. I, I don't remember 
verbatim of what he said they represented. Right. But um, I was trying to get and see the the, the the different representations of these entities that he talked about. Can you okay. give us more uh, understanding on that? I haven't read anything about what you know the information that he talked about Michael Myers or Jason and things like that. The only thing I've, I've known him to say is that you know we got to give those you know give those up. Uh, the different horror movies and things like that, because they have a lot of demonic messages. That's the only thing I learned from him. Um, as far as information being learned from them, I, I didn't hear, I didn't read anything about that recently or okay. anything before at all. No, uh, but, I haven't. But I, I I pretty much got the information of, of the meaning of, of those different types of uh, movies okay. and what's in them. Uh, like um, there was a movie I saw, Insidious, about mm-hmm. this boy who was sick, and he traveled to many different dimensions. Right, and the right. followed him back. Right. And that, that gave me some understanding that your mind and your subconscious could travel to different mm-hmm. dimensions. Right. And things can follow you back. And then it, true. It, it, it presented itself to the now mind. Right. It's true. And, and so, I mean, I, I got the right understanding from that. Yeah. And just to give you another level of it, um, if you remember in going to horror movies, <laughs> uh, one of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, it was called The Dream Master. Um, it was a female. I, I, I knew Nightmare on Elm Street from the back at one point. And, uh, it was a female that was fighting Freddy. And if you remember, she put, she pulled Freddy, I think she beat Freddy in the Dream World. So right. she was able at that point to defeat someone who had literally was on the level of the dream state, you know, who was on the, who haunted kids in their dream state, in the dream state. So she was able to go in the dream state and defeat a demon within the dream state. And realize, if you remember, that in Mrs. of Egyptian Matt, I'm, I'm glad you said this, in the Mrs. Of, of Egyptian Matt CD or tape, he talked about how a person can have a physical reaction when they're asleep. How can you have a physical, let's say, for example, you, your, your sweat glands are working while you're asleep. How can you have a physical reaction if you're not even up doing anything? You're asleep. These things, you would be dreaming this is happening. You wouldn't be physically having a sweat situation. You know what I'm saying? These are, that's, that was a physical situation going on. So if you remember, after, you know, usually when... Freddie would kill someone in their dream, they would die physically. You know, and it's like that's a that's a message. I'm, I'm glad you touched on that. That's a, a message that in the dream state, certain things ha- if certain things happen to you, you're able to be reacted to that on the physical level. That was a, a message. I'm glad you said that, brother. That was a me- how I for that. That's a message. That they, you know, certain parts of the movie were able to show you that this is this is a message. This is connected. This can actually happen. You understand, and that's going right back into when the masters, you know, of your initiation process take you to that level again, because in that subconscious, they will, you know, once you're able to fight Freddy and defeat Freddy, then you you're able to confront the spider that bit you as a child and fe- and you're able to fear that and you're able to find a way to defeat that spider as a child. Then you And then you leave that, then you come across a Doberman Pinscher. Then you have to confront that Doberman Pinscher and it takes you right back to your childhood. This is all happening again within the subconscious mind. So you're... In the subconscious mind, having a battle with the Doberman pension now as a dog. These are real situations. This is not a joke. This is real situations. And you have to confront them before you can put on that mask of God. Because you have to take off, because God has no fears. Once you become God, God is the absence of any fears at all on any level, whether it's physical or etheric, there is no fear. So once you're able to confront that, which is your greatest fear, which may be that dog, and you're able to defeat that fear. Because it's, 
it, it, it will be locked in your subconscious. As they say, you have to defeat this, and you have to confront it, and you have to win. And if you're afraid of it, then it's your own fault. Same thing. When we're asleep, for example, if you're going through what's called sleep paralysis, and you're going through sleep paralysis, and you have a moment where disembodied souls, whether it be your, your father, your mother, grandmother, grandfather, may be trying to come to you, and you might be on that journey or that level where your vibrational frequency is able to be opened up. Uh, you already opened yourself up, or you have been opened up based upon your genetics, and they know this. Those embodied souls already know how opened up you are, and they try to come to you, and you close the gate through fear. And the fear is, and that's still, again, connected to the subconscious mind. So because you have not confronted those fears at that time, those disembodied souls who may be trying to use you to to relay, not, not use you to come back, but use you to relay a message. That's why they created, you know, that's why they try to create the, these Ouija boards to do the same practice that, that we're able to do on our own without the aid of a Ouija board. And once you're able to push back those thoughts or push back those thoughts of fear, then they can come to you and they can use you as a conveyor of a specific message that my grandmother may need to give to me to give to my mother. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So all these things, the, these fears that we have in our mind, that's, that's one aspect of able to controlling the subconscious mind because, again, it can, different thoughts can pop out, can pop up from the subconscious to the now at any given moment. And we don't know why we're doing it. And then we look at people who's who's going through moments like that, that they have a severe case of not being able to control the subconscious, and we call them paranoid schizophrenics. Right. You know, or people with Tourette or all these different things that, you know, the, the European structure decides to diagnose people with, and they have no knowledge of the subconscious on a correct level at all. So. Right. They begin to label things, what they want to label, and then you start giving people medicine for it, and none of it was even necessary in the first place. All you needed was, was proper knowledge as of what you're dealing with in your subconscious mind. Right. You know, right. This, is, this information is necessary because, again, these are all connected. This is, as I talked about in the, in the Christ Conscious series, these information this information is is necessary to know because again everything is connected from your physical the ether core all nine principles is cre creates a kundalini of connection and okay. if you're not able to at least confront some of that or be able to control some of that at least on the fourth plane which is the mental plane or the mental reservoir you're able to control what goes in and what comes out. And part of that, again, is needed some form of meditation, you know, because then you can release your mind. You're able to, you know, because once you sit down, the first thing that, that goes through your mind is chaos because when you walk on this planet, you're constantly confronted with so many different forms of chaos. So what's going on in your in your in, in your now mind is so much forms of chaos it's it's ridiculous. And once you sit down in whatever position makes you comfortable, then you have to confront the subconscious. And until you confront the subconscious, you won't be able to clear your mind. So the whole practice is clear your mind and let everything pass through. Clear your mind, let everything pass through, let things come to you, and let the things that are coming to you, you control those things. Okay, when they come, when, they, when they're implanted thoughts, eventually those implanted thoughts will go away, and you're able to take that what's in your mind and travel self, and be able to travel self to other forms of worlds or other forms of time those are the things that you're able to do while you're in that state or even just in a state of just peace while you're in meditation state because all you're trying to do is just relax, relax 
and let go. And my father says, on whom what are you? Relax and let go. That's all you need to do. Yes, yeah, true indeed. Let go of the fear. Like some people have a fear of not mm-hmm. having honey or not having enough. But then mm-hmm. there's always something there to remind me that this economy and this economic system is collapsing. So right. there's not going to be such thing as money anymore. Exactly. You know, your money is not going to matter at all. Because, you know, I remember hearing um, Minister Farrakhan say at one point, he said, you know, he reminded people that the first law of nature is survival. Everything is going to turn into survival mode sooner or later. Right. You know, if you're not careful, you know, your money is not going to even matter anymore. So right. that's why I don't, you know, it's good to save and have things, but I don't make it such a point where I stress out about it anymore. Whatever right. happens, happens. Hey, if I go broke, I go broke. And there's nothing I can just do but just build on self and try to do for self. But other than that, yeah. You know, there's no sense of having fear of, of mundane things anymore. It doesn't right. bother me because, you know, whatever's going to happen, it's going to happen. But I can right. control that. Right. So, at being a level of God, we can control things. And even when I had an experience last year, you know, you said watching these horror movies, bro. You know, I watch paranormal activity. I mean, I'm waking up 3 o'clock in the morning, find myself moving in my own bed, but I need even physically moving. Mm. And I've had that experience before. And then I finally had to say, because I felt something was pulling at me, I said, get off me, and it stopped. So it's about being back in control of self. And, by, you, you know, like Baba said, by watching these kind of movies, you know, mm. unless you're trying to pull information or knowledge, wisdom, or an understanding from them, you're trying to get the right knowledge from them, there's no sense of watching. That's why I don't right. watch them much anymore. Right. Right. Right, right. You are so right about that. You have to get to a point where it's, it's, it's no longer need or desire. You know, fear is something that is created because we have no knowledge of it. We we fear the other side. And once we take ourselves to the other side of it and look at it, it's nothing. It's just nothing. It's this is, you know, as a as a god. And as your own, as your master, and you being the master, you have to see what you're going through in this physical plane as something that you can control. Okay, if you can control the subconscious, you can control anything. You can control anything because, again, you are your own God. You are God. And once you're able to realize that, because repetition at a certain point creates reality in your mind. The more you tell yourself something, Eventually, you will you you will know it to be fact. You it, it, will no, it will no longer be belief. It will be fact because you begin to act on it. Right. After a while, I say, "I'm God. I'm God." Say it all day, every day. I'm God. Eventually, everything that embodies God, you will act on. That will be reality to you. It won't even be a doctrine anymore. It will be reality. It will be real. It will be fact to you. So everything you're going through. Broke, rich, sickness, everything, um, regardless, relationships, all those things will no longer matter. It will no longer matter because you're like, I'm trying to get to the other side. I'm trying to get back to eat the one. You know, all these things, again, if 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 you, that, that court will be severed eventually while we're still connected to all these implantations because... We're still lost. A lot of us are still lost in that, again, as my father say, that Las Vegas state of mind. Because we, we, we like to be entertained by things. Rather, looking at it for what it is from a third eye standpoint and taking the information from that and applying it to our life. Because, again, this society, when they created movies, most of the movies that were created was art imitating life. And so now like that art, it, 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 exactly, that, that's, that was what the purpose of movies were for anyway. And so now we're getting to a point, you know, over the past 30 or 40 years, these movies became nothing but a way to control the masses of people through negativity. And most of us know this, but are still acting on the entertainment value of it. 
and we have to get past the entertainment value of it and realize that it is damaging our subconscious. Okay? We start acting on things that we know no knowledge of. We don't know why we're acting on it. We don't know why it even did what it did, why it made you do what you did, because you're not in control of self anymore. You know? And until you're able to be in control of self, then the subconscious will constantly rule you. It will constantly rule you. Constantly have these little moments, lash out moments, at any given time. You know, come out through sadness, depression. Depression is all is a, is a is a subconscious mind situation, because what what depression is is a point of a time zone in your subconscious that is built up, and you built it up through different events of time, through low self esteem, and so. You can overcome depression by overcoming the time zones that you created that you are stuck in. The points of sadness, the points of rejection, whether it be through women, men, a job, loved ones, family, all these things, they are built up and you've created it in your mind as a master. And it is, it is encoded inside of your subconscious and until you're able to Push that aside. You always have problems. Always have problems physically. Always have problems mentally. You always have these moments where you just bust out crying for no apparent reason. That's conscious. And you're not able to control that. That's on you. But you have to be the master. You have to be the one to take that chemical situation inside of your mind and let that go. Again, we're going right back to relaxing and letting go. Relax and let go. You have to, even if you have to tell yourself this when you're going into lotus position, tell yourself that. You know, go into on the whole what are you tape, clap, and make that vibration. You know, create the hollow sound. So I'll create the hollow sound, and you're able to sit down, and you sit and you sit yourself down, and that means you've within yourself. Through psychic self-defense, you're able to push off all the implantations and everything that's already inside of your mind and inside your subconscious, you're able to push it away. And all it is, now that's left, is you and the powers of self, the powers of God, because now it's up to you now because you're able to push them off. You've done that already. And what's left? Where you take self. Where do you take self? While you're sitting in that position, it's about where you decide to take self from that point on. Nothing's holding you back. There's no more rattlesnake. There's no more uh, spiders, no more Doberman Pinchers. The Freddy Krueger's gone. The leather face, the chainsaw mask, all these things. Because remember, the enemy created these things to, to destroy our vibratory frequency. That's the reason why they did it. They did that. Okay? And we're buying into their system. We're like, oh, I, I got to see that new Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. I'm like, why? Why do you want to see that? For what? How's that helping you? You know, and then that person wants to argue you about it, and, and, oh, and then you'll, you know, I do what I want to do. Okay, go ahead and watch it then. And realize that when you when you when you go lay down, that now you're thinking about Leatherface coming up behind you with a text, with, with a chainsaw implantation again. You know, and you 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 and you you take it from the subconscious and bring it to the now mind, and you start talking about it, and you start having visions about it, and it, 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 it and it becomes another enemy and another fear in your mind, because you've manifested itself as another fear and an enemy in your mind. All that stems from what you can do. That's the tall tale sign that you can do all these things because you created it. You created all the thoughts and the fears that you've gone through. You created those things. You know, and the biggest problem with religion is that it takes away the responsibility of self. And you, and you take the responsibility of self off of self and you put it on God or the devil. And the thing with right knowledge is that the responsibility is longer... God, some spook God somewhere, some spook spirit ghost, or some devil with a hot with uh, with, with a pitchfork on on a household's bottle. It's only you at the end of the day 
that can control all those things. Because remember, the spook god is an implantation. Um, the white god concept, implantation. Um, the hell concept, implantation. The devil concept are only the implantations from who? The enemy. The beast man. The devil. The Tanum Hayu. Whatever name you want to use, these are all implantations that he put inside of us to have us working on his frequency in his train of thought. And we have to recognize that and push it back. That's up to us to make that decision. Indeed. Okay? Indeed. True sure indeed. I Any more questions? Sometime, I tell myself sometimes, and I always remind my mind, I'm, a sun, I'm the sun god. I'm a descendant right. of the sun god. Mm-hmm. And guess what? When I walk somewhere, people look at you. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you have to see it within yourself. You have to you say, keep telling yourself these things, and the truth will come out, and it will manifest itself. Exactly. Exactly. The problem is the enemy knows who we are. We don't know who we are. Mm-hmm. That is the main problem. And once we know who we are, he will dissipate, and we will truly reemerge as dark matter on this planet. 